Oh, come on now. I know you're hungry, but let's try this again before we start eating. My name is Matt Strong, and I'm running for Congress. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now, this is this is the beginning of my launch, but frankly, I'll tell you, this is about coming out and celebrating and spend time with each other. Uh, and thank you for coming out, and please continue to talk to each other and enjoy yourself. Now, we're gonna, we have a long list, and I have a long list of things that we need to do, but you know what? I'm gonna skip all that and go into more imp impromptu discussions and presentation. So, what I'd like to do is, uh, if I can ask someone to come up to do an invocation. So, God before countries. So, would someone would like to volunteer? Joanne, please come on up. Jo a round of applause for Joanne Chase. And we're going to have a special guest tonight, and I'm going to call people out. So, I'm going to ask Alicia. Uh, who's going to come up and sing the national anthem? So go ahead and queue up, Alicia. But Joanne's going to do an invocation. So please stand up and remove your cap and uh, face in this direction. God the Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. You say that where two or more are together in your name, you are with us. We ask you, Jesus, to send legions of angels from heaven to camp around Matt and every single individual that is here today so that we can all do your will, so that you can protect us and guide us and teach us to only do what is the best for God, for family, and for country. Thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings. Amen. Thank you so much. And please remain standing. And I'm going to ask Alicia Delgado to sing the national anthem. But I can also tell you that 
I also have a great support of benefactors and other folks in, in the Trump campaigns and also, for example, this facility here. It's owned by a benefactor. And he's so selfless that he told me, do not use my name, you don't have to. I do this because I believe in you, man. And I believe that there's, we can do things together. And this is my way to help you get there. So a round of applause for this benefactor. But you know what? There's always a catch to it. <laughs> so, and he's joking when he told me that whatever you do, please make sure you keep it clean when you're finished with it. So I thought, oh, okay, we're good with that. <laughs> so uh, another person, another group of people that I like to uh, recognize is my family. So I want to recognize my wife, Diane Fong, so please stand up. Just so you know, the reason why I'm running, and for those who are happily married, you know that the final decision to launch is your spouse. So thank you very much for allowing me to run, and hopefully it will pay off, right? Yeah. On the other hand, there are two, I have two older boys. One is 20 and the other one's 17. And if you have boys or kids of this age, they're probably saying, go on, do whatever you want to do. Right. So I want to recognize my son, Devin Trump, and Darius Trump. <laughs> and since Devin is wearing a jacket and drive, he's the one that got the pizza here. So uh, go take tips. Right? <laughs> That's good. All right, so. To make things, I would call it slightly different because it's not about me telling you how great I am. Uh, and my wife would say, no. But I'm gonna ask and to prove, and tonight is a good night for you, but actually tonight, good night for my wife to hear from other people's perspective of what they think about me and why I should run. So this is gonna help me, help my wife, help you, It also, to me is to uh, let people know, recognize those that stand up here and speak. Because United States is a land of opportunity. And I strongly believe that. A round of applause for that. Give your favorite. And this is what I learned, folks, uh, and just by accident, because uh, typically, a lot of things that happen to me, it seems to be very common sense and obvious, but talking to other people, they're saying, no, you're very special, this is unusual. And I told them that what contributes to that success or lucky or opportunity is the fact that I focus and work very hard and very smart of the, the things that I do such as coming here with two pair of clothes and two words of English uh, at 12 years old and have gone through college, have master's degree in electrical engineering, have done three successful startups, working in a large company, multi-billion dollars business. And for me to that, get that happen, normally maybe I have some skills, if you would, but to me, I attribute it to those that actually recognize some of the things I've done and my potential, and also gave me the opportunity to become better and contribute to society. So with that in mind, I'm gonna start asking a few people to come up. I'm gonna announce two names, so that way we can get people queued up. I'm gonna ask you to speak for two minutes or less. The reason why for two minutes is if you're saying so great, you know, much great things about me, I'm going to yank the microphone away from you. <laughs> so with that in mind, I'm going to ask, let me see, uh, who wants to go first? Matt, since you're standing, Matt Leeds, come on up. So Matt Leeds is a unit chair of our county. I know Matt for a couple of years now, and I don't know what he's going to say, folks, really. So I'm going to let him speak about it and uh, from the heart, hopefully, and uh, let's see what he, how's he doing. Oh, wait. 
He does have a speed. All right, here we go. Um, as Matt said, my name is Matt Leeds. You know, I'm the older and not so good looking Matt. Uh, uh, I am the chair for Clark County, and I want to thank Matt for inviting me. Uh, I'm also running for the district chair as well. Uh, I'm very glad that all of you are participating. This is just the start, okay? I warn you. Uh, I met Matt uh, two or three years ago, and it, it was this guy who started talking about the Declaration of Independence, the Declaration of Independence, which is the why, the Constitution, which is the how, uh, freedom, God-given rights, those kinds of things. And why America is exceptional. I said, really? You know, if this guy's not running, he's going to be running for Congress soon. And here you are now. Um, I'm re I really want to speak to the new people. I mean, I see some old faces in here, but a lot of new people that are just getting into the process. Um, there are certain things, well, first of all, the Republican Party was founded on freedom. You know, making a more perfect nation. Not a perfect nation, a more perfect nation. That is the Republican legacy. That is not the Democratic legacy, which is far from it, if you read your history. Um, there are certain things that the party is and should be doing. Um, you know, one is a governing philosophy. If you know the Republican creed, that is our governing philosophy. I have cards with that on it, and I'll leave it up, up at the desk if you want to see it. If you haven't seen it before, it's important. The party provides infrastructure. The organizational support for the candidates, that's what it should be doing. It provides continuity, you know, institutional memory. Why do we do things the way we do things? There is a reason for it. Um, people being what they are, we provide a little discipline, you know, when people go a little crazy within the party. It's happened, I've been involved in that before. Um, and you may not think about this, but also ballot access, believe it or not, huh? Members of the major parties, their nom nominees are guaranteed access to the ballot. That's some of the things that the party provides for the candidates. Uh, the 10th district, which is what man is running in, uh, but let me back up. There are multiple nomination methods, and again, this is really for the new people here. There's a primary which is run by the local governments, it's paid for by the local taxpayer. And I'm from a small county, and some, you know, in some races, that had been upwards of $100 a vote to run those things. Uh, there are also party-run nominations, or party-run methods, and that's what we're going to do this time around. There's, the, there's a party-run primary, which is known as the firehouse. Uh, there's a convention, there's a mass meeting. The party has chosen a convention. And this is really going to be important in terms of your uh, participation. I'm assuming everybody here is for Matt. He's going to need your participation in this convention. Are, are you sure about that? Okay. Around policy, you actually do support me. <laughs> All the rules haven't been formulated yet around the convention. Matt will let you know. We will inform him of what the whole process is and how it's going to look. Um, and how you can become a delegate to the convention. Because that's how you're going to vote for him to nominate him, you know, for the, as a Republican nominee. Uh, and that would be through your county, generally through your county or city committee. Uh, but eventually, it's going to end up in a convention within the district. Uh, just, uh, I want to repeat myself again. To support Matt, or any other candidate for that matter, but to support your candidate, who I'm assuming is Matt, um, you're going to have to participate. So this is just, it's, it's not a one-night thing. Uh, as party chair, I am not in a position to endorse anybody. Because I'm part of those who, you know, enforce the rules. Uh, but what I do do is I endorse the nominee. Uh, the 
party's job is to select the nominee. And believe it or not, all of you are the party. My job is to listen to you. You know, members of the party. Uh, and I will endorse and work to elect the nominees. And at the end of the day, the voters are always right. So it's important to show up. And the elections tell us, you know, if we're doing a good job or not. And believe it or not, you know, more recently and more often than not, you know, the opposition has been winning. Not totally, but on balance they have. You know, it's the job of the party to choose the right product and the right salesman. And you have to make sure, you know, if you're for Matt Trump, then he has to be the right product and the right salesman. Um, and you're gonna have to work hard to do that. Remember, Jennifer Wexton and the Democrats are the real enemy. You know, Jennifer Wexton, when she was in the Virginia Senate, was voted the most liberal senator of the entire Virginia Senate. And she's one of the most liberal members of Congress, you know, you know, along with, uh, you know, Ayok and Chuck Schumer, you know, she's running in that crowd. But after the nominee is selected, we have to come together. It's very important, and that's a party function as well. Um, I've supported all the GOPs. I've been a registered Republican since I was 18. Uh, and many of them haven't been my first choice. But it's imperative that we come together or we will lose. Uh, and if we lose, we get people like Jennifer Wexton, AOC, Chuck Schumer. Uh, yeah, who was right? Uh, there needs to be a new attitude in the GOP. And, you know, Matt is one of those. I mean, when, when he, I first met him, he was talking about all those things. Uh, and that attitude is, we win, they lose. You have to challenge people nicely. Don't, don't be like the opposition, but you have to challenge them and call them out. You have to do your homework at all times. But it has to be an attitude of we win, they lose. Uh, after Matt speaks, or the others finish speaking, you know, if you want to know more about the party process and how you participate, come and see me. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You know, I want to yield to somebody else. Thank you. Folks, bottom line is this. This is great, and they talk a lot about time, talent, and treasure. God. But you also got to be a delegate you know, to support me. I'm asking you, Matt, not thank you, but I'm asking you to become a delegate to go to a convention to select me, to vote for me. And we can talk offline more about that. But there's more to it than just, hey, this is awesome, I'm behind you. And you got to help me moving forward to get the, the vote out. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask Joel Travis to come up. Then we're going to ask General Herbeck. So he's, he's the next one up. So Tro Joel Travis is the CEO of PPI, a legal immigrant from South America. And I'll let you know, say something like that. Thank you, man. Thank you, everybody, uh, for allowing me to say a few words uh, during this very critical and pivotal time in American and uh, politics here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. As everybody knows, we're at a tipping point. I, uh, I've been involved in uh, Republican uh, politics as a supporter for many years, and through a mutual friend, I was introduced to Matt. He said, you have to meet this fella. He's something special. And I said, ah, oh, geez. Okay, this was on a Thursday at 3 p.m. in my office. And we ended up talking for four hours. And I said, honey, I'll be home soon. <laughs> it was so exciting. His vision for what he wants to do for us was dead on. So I had to take time and talk about Matt. Let's start with the basics. He has what it takes to win. You know, he's an inclusive immigrant. He worked hard. 
He's an undergraduate from Penn State, Happy Valley, uh, MBA from the University of Maryland. He works hard all his life and climbs the corporate ladders for uh, firms like Rockwell Collins, leaves as a senior executive, and that isn't enough. He does three successful startups. What that means is he, he cut paychecks, he managed budgets, he led a team, and he created jobs. So we're very happy now to have Matt uh, lead us and try to change the current direction of Virginia politics. The second part is he said, Joe, think about something that's near to your heart and think about something that's very important. And that was easy. I said, you're from another hemisphere. I'm from the southern hemisphere in South America. And we grew up having experiences of what happens when left-leaning politics take over a country of people. Yes. And it's time for guys like Matt and guys like Joe. By the way, I'm Joe. In current politics, it would be JVT, like AOC. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Joey. It's not Jose Vladimir Travis. I've been here for 45 years. It's Joe. <laughs> so, when you grow up as young children and young men in left-leaning countries and socialist regions of the world, you see what can happen. It's not politics, it's mathematics. So to have somebody run and represent our commonwealth who has on the ground experience and doesn't want to recreate what we left, it's what we need, we need Matt. seconds to tell a story. Really yes, good. Go for it. So we have cousins here from South America. We were having a nice dinner last night. And it made me think of something. In villages in Latin America, and I'm sure in suburbs of Vietnam, every four years a politician steps up to the stage, they build a stage and it's called Circus and Bread. And what it is is they offer the people salvation. They offer the worker, the machinists, our farmers, salvation. And they tell us that si se puede, si se puede. And they promise free chickens and free bus fare. And they take away our dignity and we vote. And four years later, the director of finance tells the president that we have an issue. Everybody left. We're out of money. <laughs> Sound familiar? And si se puede, in English, translates to, yes, we can. <laughs> you ever heard that before? <laughs> I heard it a few years ago, and shivers went down my back because I've heard that since I was a five-year-old boy. He said, with it, yes, we can. So I believe Matt's gonna go, and Matt, please run on No se puede. Can, some, can you guys say, no se puede? That means no, we can't. So please repeat after me. Will you choose to change our constitution? Will you choose to weaken our national defense? Will you choose to take our money? Or can we manage our money a bit better? No se puede. So I think that Matt is the man to run on the platform of going back to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. He's an originalist, so thank you very much. And yes, I am a constitutionalist. So I'm going to ask General Burbeck to come up. General is a dear friend, also a colleague at uh, our, our NCR government system, and I'm sure he got some wonderful stories to tell you. I'll try not to be as eloquent as you were. How many have flown in an airplane? Been in an airplane? Yeah. I want to know how many times did you get on the airplane and somebody walked up to the front? and got on and said, ladies and gentlemen, we have this beautiful cockpit up here. 
and we need a pilot. So I would like anybody here that would like to be flying this airplane, come on up front here. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you why and why you would want that office called the, the cockpit of the airplane. And how many of us would stay on that airplane if Mary or Bob walked up and took over the cockpit and said, I'm going to fly in Boston or I'm going to fly in LA? I would imagine most of you would get off. Yet every year we seem to like politicians who don't know the first thing. Not only how to fill out a checkbook, but a run a business, to actually run something, keep it running. We elect a lawyer. Look at her qualifications that's running against that. Tell me what she's won. What P and L has she been responsible for? You heard a great litany here about what Matt's done in his lifetime. He's not gotten there because somebody gave him something. He got there because he earned it. He got there because he tried, he won, he got up again, he tried, he won, and he kept going. That's the kind of people we need running the country. You know, I'm tired. We went through four years, then another four years of a president whose only qualifications were he was a great speaker. I'm just so hard that for me to understand why we still have that even in a qualification. I could care less whether you can speak or not. Really what I want you to be able to do is do a job for the Americans. That's <laughs> going to do that We're not electing a congressman that doesn't know how to fix a problem. He's done that already. He's been down in the trenches. He's had to learn English as his first language. He's had to learn how to speak, then how to educate himself, and then get that education and do something with it. That's what we need in Congress today. We need it in Congress, on the congressional side, we need it in the presidency, and we need it in the judicial system. People that understand what this country is built, how it operates, and where we're from. My last comment as I was coming over here, I love college football. And we were talking about it just recently, watching the teams play. And you think about it, those teams, the big discussion right now is who's going to be in that final, what, top six when they play off, who's going to be the number one college team? And you know, it's the team that has the best quarterback. It's the team with the great linemen. They practice every day. Not one kid goes into that game not experienced, not having been well trained, well coached. And we expect, we got people betting on what team will they go for? What team will be the ones that will actually make it? And they're already, by the way, Penn State's in the running. <laughs> they're, uh, they're one of the top four they're talking about right now. But you know, no one ever goes and says, geez, there's really no qualification. How many times were you on that airplane did you go, I wonder what college they went to? All you care about is how well can they fly that airplane? Or how well can that quarterback throw that ball? We have a chance to put somebody finally in the Congress, and I could not be more excited. That's got experience, that's been there, pulled himself up, taken it, made himself great, as a person, as a family man, and as a part of our great country. I could not be more proud as a service member who spent 35 years, and I use this example often with Matt, that's why we fight, is to bring young men and women like this along and make them heroes for every young man and woman that are to follow. Thank God Matt's running for Congress. If he didn't say my name at the end, I was well for that guy. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. I'm going to ask uh, Charlie Painter to come up. Charlie is also a business partner, and uh, he's going to say a few words. And I'm going to ask uh, Manga to come up next. So I'm going to try and find other people to speak. So Steve? Okay, all right. Steve wants to speak, so I'm going to have to add him on the list. <laughs>
Round of applause for Charlie. Well, thank you very much. It seems like in recent months, every time I've been called to speak, it's been after General Furback, and this is getting really old. It's very difficult to follow. I want to make just a few brief comments about Matt and why his campaign for Congress is so important. We live in an extraordinary time. All you have to do is see what's going on in Congress right now as we speak. All you have to do is turn on the radio, or the television, or look at the national media. All you have to do is look down in Richmond at the State House and the Governor's Mansion. This is an extraordinary time. Our First Amendment, our Second Amendment, rights are under attack. Many of our values are under siege. And in cases like that, or situations like that, the Republican Party has to call upon its very best. Individuals with resilience, individuals with knowledge and know-how who are willing to take the mantle of leadership. This is an exceptional man. This is Matt's time. We need Matt in Congress. A couple more words and then, then I'll pass the mic. I've known Matt for about six years. And I thought about driving over here with my 14-year-old. What adjectives would I use to describe Matt Trump? He's smart. He's compassionate. He's resilient. He's expert in his field. He's exactly the man that we need in the United States Congress. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm going to ask Langa to come up. I'm going to ask Steve Jackson to come up. Is that Steve or uh, Brother Kerry? Brother Kerry. All right, line up, sir. Mango is right. By the way, a round of applause for Mango for running for the 11th congressional district. I'm sh you're not going to see that story, right? Oh, you are. Oh. Okay. I think we're going to share the story. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't actually prepared to speak, but when I came in, he said, You're going to talk. I said, I am. Thank you. I 
equal rights activist. I am a religious freedom activist. I am big on religious freedom and so is Matt. To realize, to realize and to connect with Matt that our constitutional rights do matter for us. It's a greatest thing and a gift to realize. And I really thank Matt to make me realize. And if that's not the end of the story, when he was done, he made me start thinking and he planted this seed. Manda, all of this activism for the last three years, I think I have watched some of your videos, but don't you think the fight that you're fighting from outside, don't you want to take it inside to defend more people? That is profound. People who have that fire, who can recognize and realize that our constitutional rights are important, must be in the Congress. And I think we should all take that to Congress. That's